I'm excited about the word. Yep, looks so good being close to Pastor. I tell you what, what, what I'm excited because Lady Carol is doing Bible class in two weeks. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord. Y'all should have got excited right there. We were we excited. Woo! Yes, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hey, God, in the second chapter in verse number 18 and 19, we have this and I have this word. It says, consider now from this day and upward from the four, the four and twentieth day of the ninth month, mm -hmm. even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have not brought forth. Watch this now. From this day. Will I bless you? Amen. Help me, priest. Look at the person by your tongue. Say, neighbor. Amen. Count on it. Amen. You may have received the prayer of the Lord. Count on it. Count on it. How many folks can testify that you can count on what God says? Amen. Now, I want to give you the heads up that this is going to be a part of our series uh, a series that's in, and this series is going to be entitled everything begins with the seed All right. come on class say everything yeah. begins yeah. with the seed yeah. encourage the person by and say neighbor yeah. everything yeah. begins yes. with the seed now I have this in a, another version that I want you to see the New Living Translation I want you to see it. Look at uh, on the screen, because you probably don't have it. Here's what it says from the New Living Translation. It says, think about this. 18th day of December, the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Think carefully. I am giving you a promise. Now. Now. I'll read that again. I am giving you a promise now. Uh -huh. Somebody say now. Now. I'm giving you a promise now while the seed is still in the barn. Uh -huh. mm, you have a preach by itself. Oh, yes. You have not yet harvested your grain and your, and your grapevines, fig trees, pomegranates, and olive trees and have not yet produced their crop. But from this day onward, right. I will yes, bless you. Oh, yes. I will bless you. Now, I have the liberty of looking at a, another translation uh -huh. from the Methodist Bible. And the latter part of the verse said, the blessing I will give you count on it. Somebody shout and say, you can count on it. As a matter of fact, lean on the person by and tell them, say, you can count on it. Count on it. Amen. How many folk understand that God is a dependable God? Yes, yes. How many folk understand that if God said anything or made you any type of promise, that you can totally count on the promise that God has given you? Now, what I have noticed you all throughout the scripture is the Bible you all carries this one common theme. And this common theme that you will find throughout the scriptures is where God gives a promise of something that has not yet been seen. Let me ask you, have you all ever had God give you a promise? And when God gave you the promise, you didn't see the promise. As a matter of fact, for many of us, we didn't even... Really, we had a hard time receiving the promise that God has given to us. Because we oftentimes have a proclivity, bring the monster down some, have a tendency to look at our present situation 
And then we look at the promise. We look again at our present situation and look again at what God said. And many times what God tells us does not resemble our present situation. Come on, follow me, guys. Follow me now. But when we look at the theme of the Bible, all throughout Scripture, you will always see what God tells them, I will give you this. I will do this for you. And it is now up to the person or the individuals that God speak to you to hang on to what God said in spite of what they're going through. When God promised Abraham that I will give you Isaac, God, it's just like God to put you in a 25-year holding pattern. Now, how many folks can just tell the truth? If God made you wait 25 years, you and God would have a problem. Okay, some of y'all lying in church. Me and God would have a problem. If God made me wait 25 years, because now I'm wondering, God, what did I do wrong? But how many folks understand that just because God does not res respond based on our timetable, that it does not mean that God is not going to come through for you the way he said and cover the person by and tell them, say, God will do what he said. How about when God told Israel? God told Israel, he says, he says, I'm going to, after 400 years, bring you out of slavery. And when I bring you out, I'm going to bring you out with great substance. He said, I'm going to make of you a great nation. Now, at the time God said that, Israel was not a great nation at the time. But how many folk that God see a whole lot further than you? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that God wants to now declare the end from the beginning. And so God now uses his, his words as seed in the ground. Even if you look at the coming of Jesus, Jesus Lord did not just get here by happenstance. Someone had to open their mouth and declare his coming before he got here. As a matter of fact, if you were read over the book of Genesis, the third chapter, God himself prophesied the coming of Jesus. God said, the seed shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. God, watch this, God prophesied the doom of Satan, but he also prophesied the crucifixion of his son. He said, he, he said, my son will put a licking on your life. Right. Now you may put some pain on his feet. Right. But when it's all said and done, my son will have the last laugh. Right. And so it is, family, then with your lives. God makes us a promise and he puts the promise out in seed form. Yes, Somebody say seed form. seed form. And when God, the reason God puts the promise out there in seed form, what this now, is because God wants you and I to begin to develop a mental picture of what God is saying. Yeah. Let me see if I can say it like this. If I told you that God told me he's going to bless you with a new house, mm -hmm. most of us would jump up and screaming, Lord, a new house. Because watch this, in your mind, you have already seen yourself in that house. If I said God would give you a brand new car, most of you have already seen yourself in your new car. And so if, if I said God said he would give you a car, 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 you would just say, what? Well, he come my new car. But watch this. If I'm the only one who says it, and you don't do something with the seed that was planted, nothing happened because you didn't receive the seed. When God declared the sun would come, if you read the, 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 the scripture, the whole Old Testament is types and shadows of the coming of the Messiah, Jesus who is the Christ. Somewhere woven in there, God hid his plan from the enemy. Pastor, how did you know that God hid the plan? The Bible said, had the prince of the world known, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord. And so God, you all, is so, is so clever. Well, he's beyond clever, but that's the best word I can find right now. Right. Somebody say, he's beyond clever. He's beyond clever. As a matter of fact, God is smaller than a fifth grader. Oh, wow. God is so clever that God wove all through scriptures, watch this now, and from Genesis to 
Malachi, God had his servants to prophesy the coming of the Messiah. If you read over in the book of Luke, here it is, the angel came to Mary, and she said, Mary, he said, Mary, now unto you, the Savior is given. Right. Now, how could the angel say, now unto you, the Savior is given, when the Savior at this point was not born? All right. All right. What the angel Gabriel was doing, watch this now, was prophesying or reinforcing a coming that was prophesied over 39 chapters. They all prophesied the coming of the Lord in the earth. Now God sends a messenger to a virgin girl and says, I want you to prophesy, walk this, and get this word in the earth. Now Mary had the chance to downplay this word, like many of us. Mary asked the question, how can this thing be? Seeing that I know not a man. Now watch this. That's how our lives are. When God makes us a promise, we look at our present condition. And we ask the question, God, how can this thing be? If God says, I'm going to bless you beyond measure, you want it, all right, God, maybe you haven't seen, but I live in the hood. God says, I'm going to make you the head of a corporation. You go, God, wait a minute. I'm still working at the Golden Arches. Are you following me? And your question to God is, God, how can these things be? Watch this. See that I'm not qualified for the position. God, how can these things be? See that I don't have the right education to get the job you say I can have. God, how can you, you promise me a husband who's making six figures. When I don't have anything to bring to the table but some more bills he can make. You're acting God like Mary. How can these things be seen that I'm not qualified? And God says, well, I don't want you to figure out how I'm going to do what I'm going to do. What I want you to do is get into agreement with what I said. Right. Now, what this Mary said, he said, well, sin, I don't know how you're going to do it. She said, well, be it unto me. According to thy word. What Mary was saying was, I don't understand all the delicate details. How many folk know that God won't always tell you all the details? But watch this, when you believe what he says, and take what he says, and begin to repeat what he says, then God can do what he says. Somebody say he can do whatever he says. And so, over in Romans, the fourth, the fourth chapter, Turn there, Romans the fourth chapter, look at verse 17. Romans chapter 4, look at verse number 17. Mm -hmm. Understand everything begins with the seed. Okay. Now, before the devil mess your mind up and say, Oh Lord, here comes a sermon about money. It is not about money yet. But what I want you to understand that everything starts with a seed. Yes. Come on, because everything, everything begins yes. with a seed. Yes. Watch this. You can't have a baby without a seed. Right. Even if it's a test tube baby, there still must be a seed. Right. Come on, watch this. Look at me. Before a builder can build a building, uh -huh. watch this now. A contractor must have a seed, and the seed is called the blueprint. Right. Now, what he will do is hire an architect who can take his seed and put his seed on paper. Uh, Come on, follow me, class. Right. Now, Pastor, what, what seed is that called? That seed is called a seed of thought. Mm -hmm. Come on, class, say thought. Thought. How many of you understand or you know that your thought is a powerful seed? Yes. That's the way you're saying. Watch this. Some things you won't even do until you get a thought. That's right. Amen. Some places you won't go for vacation until something puts a thought in your mind. Let me ask you this. Have you ever asked the question, why do corporations spend millions of dollars a year on commercials? It's not like you don't drive by the office every day. But watch this. Why would they invest all this money in advertisement that when you can, if, when they have franchises all around our neighborhoods? I'll tell you why. Because they put it on television because no 
number one, they know you watch TV. Number two, they understand that if I create an appetite, the appetite will create a thought. If I create an appetite and the appetite creates a thought, watch this, then there will be a response in your body. If I create an appetite and create a thought and get a response, you will find my store. If I create an appetite and give you a thought and you find my store, you will come in and you will buy something. And what does they know that most of us buy more than we can eat? Okay, this is y'all playing friends on the first Sunday of this year. How many of y'all have gone to the store and you ordered more than you can eat at one time? Lord, rest that line again, Lord. How many of y'all have gone to the store and you ordered some stuff you know you shouldn't have eaten? went to the store and you took somebody with you and not only did you eat your food but you ate some <laughs> now watch this your appetite was created from the thought of someone else and it was their thought that caused you to have an appetite when you and I get in God's word and see God's word as a seed Watch this now. God says, if you get into my word, allow my word to be a seed. If that seed now is planted, that seed that I give you should create an appetite. If that seed then creates an appetite, that appetite should move you to action. If that seed of the word creates an appetite and move you to action, watch this then you will rightly get a response from me. But watch this. If you leave the seed in the word, leave it in the book, and do nothing with the seed, watch this. Like many of us, we like the idea of having what's in this book. Maybe I'm on the wrong side of the church. We like the idea of having what's in the Bible. But when it comes to cultivating that seed and doing something with it, the enemy causes us to back away. Yes. Because watch this, what the seed does is require us to have effort. Watch this, are you going to set the fourth chapter? Yes, sir. Watch this, I'm going to show you the power of the seed. Look at verse 17. Come on, class, are you there? Yes, sir. It says, and it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before he whom he believed, even God, watch this now, who quickened the dead and calleth those things, come on, class, which be as though they were. He said, I have the ability, I place in you, to call those things that be not as though they were. Which suggests to me then, God says, if you say it, even though you don't see it yet, if you say it, then it will show up. Okay? Let me see if, if I can say it like this. How many of y'all, when something hit your body, and the more energy you gave it, the more it felt, the more, the more, the more pain you felt? Amen. Amen. Okay, let me see if I can say it like this. Amen. Anybody ever had your, 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 your foot hurt, your knee hurt, your back hurt? And you said, Lord, my back hurt. Lord, this old bunion is killing me. Lord. Did my knee is about to cave in. And the more you said it, the worse it hurt. Amen. Come on. How many of y'all came to call the days? You would just wake up and just jump out the bed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, how many of y'all sometimes take you about five minutes? You gotta stop. You gotta think about it. <laughs> Sit on the side of the bed and go, oh, Lord. Do I want to go through the walk of the Because this? Your mind has pre-formulated what you're going to feel by the time your feet hit the ground. Amen. 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 And so you're saying, do I really want to put my feet on the ground right now? Because watch this. You convince yourself that if I step out of this bed, the pain I'm going to feel. Amen. The Bible said, you can call those things that be not as though they 
they were. The Bible said over in Hebrew, the 11th chapter, the Bible said the world was framed or was framed by the word of God. So what's now that things that appear were made from things that are not seen. Pastor, what does that mean? That everything you see in this world, in this room, was made by something that does not appear. Amen. As a matter of fact, the share you are sitting in right now came out of somebody's thoughts. Yes. This portal, this microphone, it came because someone had a thought. And that thought in their mind was conceived and that conception came forth and produced right now what you're sitting in. Okay, I'm going to go one further. The garment you are wearing right now, no matter how new or old it was before you bought it, it was a thought, a seed in someone's head. And somebody told somebody, guess what? I went home today and I just drew up this really sharp outfit. And they found someone who was a designer or a cartoon drawer and said, here is what I want you to do. Make it black. Make it fit here. And make it go right here. And look, look like this right here. And then want this someone who can sew. Put together someone else's idea. And here it is. Now you're in the store looking for a dress. And want this, what catches your eye is someone else's idea. When you and I embrace the seat of the word of God, God said, what I want you to do is to continue to embrace my idea. Because if you will ever begin to embrace my ideas, embrace my thought process, embrace what I'm telling you to do, if you could ever embrace it, watch this now, what you will do is see the manifestation of what I said if you can ever plant the seed. Turn to Ephesians, the first chapter. Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse number 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. Got the way they feast. It's right by Galatians. Galatians, Ephesians. Look at chapter 1. Look at verse number 3. If you can't find it, I'm sure by now it should be on the screen. Watch this. It says, Blessed be the God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Look at you all. According as he has chosen us in him, what is now, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Look at me. How in the world can God choose me before the foundation of the world, what this, when I wasn't here again? See, what you all are missing is this. You're looking at the world okay. as being here. The Bible said, God, before God made the heavens and the earth, watch this, he already considered you. All right, got it, you. All right, got it, you. So the before he said, light be. Before he called the vegetation to be. Before he made one grain of dirt in the earth, he already considered you. All right, you got it. See, before he called the firmament to split in the sky, before he said anything, he already considered you. Which means then that no matter what the devil tries to bring up in your life, the devil has to understand one thing: before you do what you do, devil. God has already considered me. Now watch this. God not only considered your birth, but God considered your destiny. Woo! I'm going to shout right now. I think God has already considered my destiny. Pastor Larry, how is that? Watch this. If he's already declared the end of my life before he made the world, then the end Experience. What's your name? Kudikete. Yes. 
feet. Y'all be coming with no feet. I'm all, Talbot, Talbot, Talbot. But watch this. God had you born in this season, in this generation. Watch this. So like David, you could serve your generation. Watch this. What's going to happen with your children? If you don't teach your children how to use the word of God as a seed and plant God's word in your life and help them understand that before God made, before me and your daddy got together, God had already had you planned. Listen, no one in here is a mistake of your parents' passion. Even though they did it by accident, God already had it planned. Okay, I'm coming here. 
looking for a girl. She had to be black or white or Chinese, whatever. Got to have good hair, no hair, both hair, they got to have. And so you already know what kind of child you want. And so watch this. What you do is find an agency and say, this is the kind of child I'm looking for. Now, almost nobody goes for the child that has issues. Yeah, right. And so it was my wallet that had my 
my body doing this. You know, first of all, I, 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 I'm leaning. Y'all figure how we do that when we try to lean? You know, it, and down the head, we all drove like this. Besides me, come on, we all did can't you? But as soon as they gave us our permit, we lean. The gangster lean. Ooh. And what this? I had my, my gangster lean on, but my, my, my wall was taking me to this side. And so now I'm in pain because I'm trying to be cool and trying to keep my chains too.
There is no foundation. Would you hunt the person by and say, get your foundation right? Watch right. this. Most folk know, don't like studying the word of God. Okay, I'm going to get you there right where you live. Somebody say, here you come, here you come, here you come. Most of God's folk don't even invest time studying God's word. Now, I didn't say reading it, I said studying it. Because you can read it, watch this, you can read it and get no understanding. Okay, you know in school when teacher says, did you, how many of y'all read your homework? You say, I read it. But the moment she asks you a question, you uh, uh, uh. You know why? You read it, but didn't study it. Because when you study your work, watch this, when the test comes, you already know what the answer is. Y'all ain't following me. But watch this, when you just read it and glance over it, when the test comes, there is no foundation to hold you. You'd be surprised how many church folk leave God because their house got shook. Be surprised how many you would call those folk over there in the uh, Minnesota whose house start, whose house turned to Noah's Ark. Their house started float because because of the rain. What this? It was not that they didn't have a house, but the house didn't have a strong foundation. Do about this? If the foundation is strong and the house is tied to the foundation, do you have a major storm and the house will remain? Let me see if I can say it then like this. A ministry can have a standard. But if the foundation is strong, the ministry will survive outside the standard. Under him. In God's house, Lord, if you and I are going to ever be successful, there has to be a foundation that started with the seed of the word of God that came from the mind of God to tell us how to live during this season. Let me ask you all, how many of you all believe that God knew where you would be right now at this stage of your life? Have you ever thought about it? Watch this. Have you ever thought that God, who knows everything, already knows where I would be at this stage of my life? Child God, where you are right now, watch this, did not catch God by surprise. Now, I know he caught you off guard. When them folks told me I had cancer, see, I thought cancer was one of the folks who smoked. I thought the only folk who got cancer were folk who smoked, who smoked them, them, them cigarettes. And so when the man told me we see cancer, I'm like, what? My first thought was, how I get that? I don't smoke. What this? I don't even hang around folk who smoke. There was one girl I used to like, but she smoked. I'm like, oh, I'm kissing you. Amen. Because if you in heaven and summer and things like that, I don't want to kiss you. Y'all yeah. yeah, 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 playing. Anybody ever kiss somebody with a stank breath? Oh. <laughs> I said, I ain't kissing you because I don't want nothing. Nah, 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 y'all smoke. I ain't talking about you. Because I, I ain't kissing y'all this week. Kissing you on the door and give you a tic tac. Anyway. <laughs> and so, what this? When they said you had cancer, I am wondering how in the world could cancer find me? Because, what this? In my mind, I didn't qualify for cancer. But, what is wrong when the enemy attacks your life? What this? There is no name attached to it until it hits you.
And then I die before I get there. If I were to die before I got there, then God would be alive. Don't miss that. If the devil could kill me before I got to the place God said I would get you, then it would mean me that God is a liar. And since God is not a liar, then this test is just that. It is only a test. And so, what I must do then is rely on my foundation.
what you are really buying is this. This is what you're really buying. Now watch this. As long as the seed stays in here, it remains a bag full of seed. Most of us do this with the word of God. The seed of the word of God in the Bible. And the reason is not producing what you see on the package. is because you don't want to go through the process of getting what's on the front of the package into your life. That's the way you're saying. Okay, I saw a hand. How many of y'all love digging in dirt? You do? I got two folks like digging dirt. Come dig in my yard, man. Come on. I got weeds in my yard. Next summer, you invite to my house. I stay at 155 I ain't telling you street. Come dig in my yard. You can play in the dirt when you want to. I got a big yard, big yard full of dirt. Come play in and plant some flowers on me. But watch this. Most of us don't like the idea of digging in dirt. Watch this. Most of us don't like the idea of pulling out the weeds that come to choke out the sea. But what this in your lives, there are always going to be things called weeds. Let me ask you, anybody has some weeds grow in your life? All of us have. What the, the Bible says, the weeds of life come to choke out the word. Now watch this. Have any of you all who have planted seed before? Ever took some grass seed and spread it in the yard? Turned and walked away and looked up and there were some birds. Come on, tell me. Had the bird, the birds who ain't never came in your house. Come on, you found a bird nest in there. They didn't come in your house. But get some seed and throw seed in the ground. Not plant it, scatter it. You will look up and find a whole, he gonna bring his mama, his cousins, hook in him. They'll all be in your yard watch this eating up your seed. The Bible said that afflictions come for the word. I'm done. Oh, give, give me some. Be quiet. I'm done. Watch this, y'all. When trouble comes in your life, affliction comes in your life. It comes for one thing only. And then it comes for the word, baby. It's coming for the word. When the word is sown, the Bible says Satan comes and making him to steal the word that was sown in your heart. Have you ever had a good time at church? Had a good word, finished praising God, and went home and all hell broke out? Maybe it's just where I go. Come on, have you ever got in your car and you were saying, God, thank you for a great experience with you and look like you had got two blocks and somebody cut you off. Yeah, yeah. And that other dude rolled up. You're like, come on. You better be glad I just got out of church. I'll tell you what I'm thinking right now. Come on, you better. But watch this. Why does it come? Why does it come? Divine, it comes for the word. Yes, sir. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Yes. Your heart, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'm done. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Your heart is the soil yes. for the word of God. Amen. Yes. Yes. When you come and hear a word preached, whether it's hoot, scream, or torch. All right. Take that word. Yes, Lord. Plant that word in your heart. Because when tests come, and they will come. Yes, yes, they, yes, will. they will. Yes, they will. If you read our foundation, a text in Haggai, chapter number 2, verse 19, God says, talk, come on, put it back on the board. In the uh, end, that verse right there? NLT? Yeah, that one. Look you all, read it right here. Can, can you see it? It says, Ye have 
not yet harvested your grain. What other verse is that? There you go, right there. Come on, can you see it? Watch this. It says, I am giving you a promise. Somebody said a promise. Now, while the seed is still in the barn. Y'all missed that. Look at me. Look at me. God says, I'm giving you a promise today. While the seed is still in the bag. Watch this. Here is the seed. Here is the promise. Y'all missed that. Here is the seed. Right here is the promise. The manufacturer promised you if you plant these seeds, you will grow some African daisies. <laughs> but when I look at the seed, all I see is seed. God says, I am giving you a promise. Now, while the seed is still in the barn. You have not yet harvested your grain. He says, there has been no manifestation yet. How many of you all, you still got some seed in the barn from last year? You said, Lord, I know you promised me some stuff last year. I don't see it yet. If you don't see it, that means it's still seed. You have not yet had it manifest your promise, your healing, your breakthrough, your house, your husband, your car. Have not yet produced your crops. But from this day on, I will bless you. God says, why are you still in seed form? on the blessing. And so though your eyes may not see it today, I can still count on the blessing. What you and Curse of you say, you may not see it right now, but you can count on it. Come on, say, maybe you don't see it today, but count on it. Child God, I came to encourage someone today that maybe you don't see right now what God said. But take the seed of the word of God. And if I promise you, if you build your life on what God says, All right. and find you a promise in the word of God that matches your life, yes. you can count on what God says coming into your life if you would take the seed of the word and plant this word in your heart. Yes. And begin to live your life, govern your life. I'm telling you all, all year. This is all I'm going to preach all year. In every area of your life, it all begins with the seed. If you want healing, start planting healing seeds. Come on, if you want friends, Bible says start sowing yourself friendly. It's called a friendly seed. Come on, somebody. Come on, can I say it all starts with the seed. And my time is up. You gotta pray, somebody. Come on. You all blessed today by the word.